This is Football America. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to Football America. Thank you very much for logging on to Blake Olson on YouTube. You know what? It's the off season, and I have a special guest in the studio, head coach Doug Johnson from Longmont High School. And uh, he has a vision, and we thought, you know, this is a good time to do it. Kind of a three-pronged approach uh, to faith in football. And uh, coach, first of all, thanks for being here. But uh, what was your vision? Kind of tell us about what we're going to talk about in your vision. You know, I just, um, football's a silly game. And, uh, you know, I say that and, and people cringe when I say that. And I even cringe a little bit when I say that. But it is, it's a, it's a silly game. It's a game um, that uh, has done so much. And, I, and, you know, I say that with honor. You know, it teaches um, men, uh, boys, how to be men. And, uh, you know, it teaches us how to get up and, and how to compete and, and all of those things. But at the end of the day, it's a silly game. And, uh, you know, without a connection uh, to the Lord, uh, you know, it really doesn't mean that much. And, uh, in, in fact, in reality, it doesn't mean anything. And uh, so, you know, the Lord convicted me in one of my quiet times, you know, you are so adamant about alignment and assignment and responsibility with your players and you're constantly talking to them about that um, why don't you ever talk about that in the faith and so he convicted me to talk about alignment in the faith assignment in the faith and responsibility in the faith and as I as I looked into it I saw that our alignment in the faith is really summarized very well in Romans 5 and that our assignment in the faith is really summarized really well in John 1, and that our responsibility in the faith is really summarized really well in Romans 8. And, you know, those are just places where we can start um, or, you know, gather a spark and just ignite our faith that we might um, just draw near to him and uh, meet with the with, meet with the one coach who can truly change our history and change our eternity all right coach so now i'm going to get out of the way and you can have the microphone hey thank you blake um uh, i want to talk today about alignment as a coach where we line up on any given offensive formation is absolutely vital to the success that we will have on that given play i know that as a coach i want my defense to be lined up exactly the way that it should be in accordance with the offensive formation in fact i always tell my players how important it is to be in alignment if you've ever had a bad back you understand this when your back is out of alignment nothing else matters i can tell you right now our alignment with god is the most vital part of our lives so let me ask you are you aligned how are you aligned with God? The reality is this. We often see that someone else is out of alignment, but we do not see that in ourselves. Or we are so broken that we think that we cannot be in line with anyone. When you, your life is so messed up that you cannot have love from anyone else, why would you think that you could have love from the Lord? That is great logic. But I want you to know one thing. There is an enemy to our souls, and his name is Satan, and he uses logic every day and in every way to attack people, to attack the very people that were created by God. It is the difference between logic and wisdom. When the enemy uses logic, we must use wisdom. Think about it. It is unfathomable what God does. The king of the universe makes a visit when he comes to earth as Jesus to see us. And what does he do? in his walk as he comes to be with us? Reference John 4. He drops everything to go and visit a Samaritan woman at the well. She is the one who is sleeping with many men in her home. She has given up on her life and shamefully comes to the well at noon to draw water at a time where she does not have to suffer at the hands of her very neighbors. After all, her shame is so high that she cannot even fathom being around others, and she is trying to get away from the very person that she hates, herself. And then there is Zacchaeus in Luke 19, the crook, the guy who is ripping off God's people and using their money for his own personal gain and using Roman rule to do it. After all, the Jewish people despised the Roman iron fist, but think about how they felt about their own people partnering with Rome. Zacchaeus was hated by these people. So what does Jesus do? He goes and eats with him in the middle of the day, and he's not afraid of what people think of, about that. And then there's Nicodemus in John 3. 
a part of the greatest religious hypocrisy known to man. It is guys like him who inspire Jesus to clear the temple. Nicodemus has misrepresented God and portrays himself as perfect. And thus, we have an oppressed people who think they can never measure up. And religious leaders like Nicodemus are only making it worse. The reality of all these stories is not to encourage us to cast judgment. It is to show us that sin that lives in our lives and the very thing that Jesus does to deal with it. After all, when I examine my own life, I see the lust, the greed, the religious hypocrisy that is a part of these very stories. And yet Jesus stops. He stops his mission to save the world. He stops in order to interact with each of these. What a terrible political plan Jesus has. He breaks cultural norms, breaks religious laws, angers the ruling establishment. And at the very moments when he has gained incredible support, he turns his back on the only people that can help him. You see, Jesus wants us to be aligned with him. Does he know that we are God's enemies? Absolutely. Do we deserve to be cast away and disregarded just the same as all of these? Absolutely. Does he do it? Just the opposite. Logically, this is a ridiculous plan, but remember, logic belongs to the enemy, and we are not to employ it in our lives or in our dealings with others. Romans 5 describes this in vivid detail. While we were still his enemy, he died for us, his enemy. Let's not sugarcoat this point. We are in logic, God's enemy. What an awful representation of the one who sent us. In logic, we truly embarrass him. We disobey, we stray, we seek other avenues to fill our lustful desires. Logically, uh, the word enemy logically depicts who we truly are. You see, without Jesus, we are God's enemies. We are. Full of sin and death and selfishness, the world says, follow your heart. But the word says, our hearts are above all things deceitful. The Lord looked at all creation and could not find one person that was worthy of saving or even spending time with. Not one person. So what is his response? Mine would have been to scrap the whole thing and start over. That would be the logical thing to do. But his response was to save us. In Romans 5, Paul tells us three things. Number one, we can be justified through faith and have peace with God. Number two, we have been saved. While we were still powerless, we were saved, and Christ died for us. And number three, his his grace is far more powerful than our sin. We can either focus on the evil and the fear and the condemnation, or we can focus on the one true God. So the word alignment today is simple. Align yourself with Jesus. Read Romans 5. Read your story. Do not allow the enemy to condemn you with his nasty yet logical schemes. Simply confess that you don't measure up and cry out to Jesus to come and show you his plan. You see, the Lord has a plan, and his plan is to get you in his line. He stands at the front of the line, and he's crying for you to come and get behind him, to get lined up with him. See, if you get lined up with Jesus, you go from enemy to son. You get access to the Father and a God who has bought you at a price. You don't need a resume or a degree or a perfect life. You don't need the validation of a priest or a church or some ritual. What you need is to get lined up right. Hey, don't call lust or greed or hypocrisy or selfishness or self-worship okay. You see, the moment we start calling sin okay or even good, we trample on the very reason that he died for us. Don't do it. It's not okay. See, the scariest thing about America today is the rising agenda. It is an agenda to say that it is okay. It's not okay. And deep down, we all know it. Let me roll out a different plan. Look at the Lord and say, I struggle with this. And then get in line with Jesus. Guess what? He's got your back. There's a reason that he calls us those who are being made holy. It's because he's not done with us yet. So get in line with him, become a son, become a daughter, and start being who God has called you to be. And that is the person who says to the enemy, my father in heaven loves me more than I can ever describe. And there's not a darn thing you can do about it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Coach, thank you very much. Uh, We're going to have part two coming up tomorrow right here on Football America. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.